Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to remove a person from the background of one photo and place him into another photo. And for this video, I'm using Photoshop Elements version 10, but this will work in other versions as well. So I'm going to start with this photo of my son Carl when he was just a little guy in about 1988 or so. He looks pretty cool with his shades on and belting out a song, but the background of the photo doesn't do him justice. He's sitting on the steps leading to my in-law's cabin, which is actually a great place, you just can't tell it from this photo. So I'm going to remove him from this photo and place him in a different one. The first thing I need to do is make a selection of just Carl to separate him from the rest of the photo. I'm going to start with the Quick Selection tool and just click and drag over him. The Quick Selection tool is this tool right here. And you want your brush to be, you know, smaller than your subject but not too small. So I'm just going to click and drag and you can see it detects the edges of what you drag over and makes that your selection. And it does a pretty good job. And then I'm just going to click to add a couple areas that got missed. And just kind of do the best best you can initially with this tool. And it selected this whole area in here, so I'm going to hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. And when you do, you can see my cursor changes from a plus sign to a minus sign, meaning that when I click and drag, I'll take a, I'll subtract from the selection. So I'll click and drag in here. And there we go. It's not perfect, but it's good enough to start with. So now I'm going to switch to the Lasso tool to refine my selection a little better. I'll go over into the toolbox and click on the Lasso tool. And I'm going to zoom up a little bit on my image so I can hold the command and spacebar on a Mac or it'd be the control spacebar on a PC. And my cursor turns into the zoom tool. And I'm just going to go up to about 200%. With the Lasso tool, you want to go up into the options bar and there's these four little option icons up here. And I want to add to my present selection. So I'm going to click on the second choice. If I just left it on the first one, let me click on that first one and show you what, what happens when I try to add this part. It replaces the selection I had with my new selection, which is not what I want to do. I want to add to that selection that I already had. So I'm going to undo that and click on that second little icon. And now I can click and drag over an area and it will add it to my present selection, which is what I want to do. Here's a little bit in here. And I don't want to bore you too much with uh, in this video by having you watch me select all these little parts, so I'm going to try to be fairly quick here. Grab that area and there's a little spot here on his pants I can get. And that looks pretty good. Now I want to remove some areas uh, from the selection. Actually, I want to make sure I get his hand in here. There's a couple areas I need to subtract from the selection. So I'm going to go back up to my options bar and click on the third um, icon from the left, which is subtract from selection. And now you can see my cursor has a minus sign uh, by it, indicating that it will subtract from the selection. So I'm going to take away this part right here. And I'm going to take away this part. And then I notice down here there's a part of a shoe is missing. So I'm going to actually switch to the Add to Selection icon and just add in that bottom part of the shoe. So using the Lasso tool helped us tweak the selection a little closer to what we need. Now I'm going to switch to another feature to get it just the way I want it, and that is the Refine Edge feature. I can get there right from the Options bar for the Lasso tool. You see right up here it says Refine Edge. Or I can go up under the Select menu and choose Refine Edge from there. Either way um, brings me to the same place, which is this dialog box. 
And the first thing I do when I get in the Refine Edge dialog box is I decide, do I want to see what my selection is going to look like on a white background or a black background? And so if you move down here, there's five different choices you have, but I'm just going to focus on this black or white one. I know that I'm going to be bringing my son into a darker photo with a darker background, so I'm going to choose black and that shows me what my current selection looks like on a black background. And then if you hover your mouse over any of these three sliders, it tells you down in this description area what, the, what each slider does. The smooth one, I'm going to actually probably leave at about four. It looks pretty smooth. And the feather looks pretty good. It looks like I'm getting some of my old background around the edges, um, so I'm going to pull this contract and expand slider in until I get rid of some of that. And that looks pretty good right there, actually. So I'm going to say OK to that. And once I click OK, it will apply the changes to my selection and close me out of the dialog box. I like to put my selected object on its own layer. I can do that by pressing Command-J on a Mac or Control-J on a PC. So let me do that. And if you look down in the Layers panel, I'll bring it up here so we can see it better, it added a new layer above my background layer of just Carl on a transparent background and named it Layer 1. Well, make sure you have Layer 1 active by clicking on it and then go up to the Select menu and choose All. And then press Command or Control C to copy it to your clipboard. Now I can open the new photo I want to put him in. And I already have that up in my tab. So I thought this was a little more appropriate for him to be in this photo. And all I have to do to put him in there is Mac, um, press Command V to paste them in, or Control V on a PC. And you can see it came in quite large. So I'm going to switch to the Move tool in my toolbox. I'm going to put my cursor on one of the four corners and until I get the double-headed arrow, and then I'm going to click and drag diagonally to proportionately size him down. And I'll just visually go to what I think looks like the right size. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell, but with all those other adults, I think something like that looks about right. And then I'm just going to place my cursor inside of the bounding box and click and drag to move them right in there front and center of the stage. And then I'll click on the, uh, the green check checkbox to commit to those changes. At this point, you might have to make some adjustments to make it look like he really belongs in the new photo. For instance, in my photo, my son looks way too bright for the rest of the photo, for the area that he's in anyway. So I'm going to go up to the Enhance menu and choose Adjust Lighting, and then choose Brightness Contrast and I'm just going to grab the slider f uh, for the brightness control and move it to the left and then kind of watch and see. I just visually see what looks good for, for this photo. So something like that, I guess, looks OK. So I'll click OK to commit to that change. What I like to do is, since his feet are down in a dark area, I can, I can make his feet a lot darker and so it's not so apparent that he was brought into this photo. So I'm just going to grab my brush tool from the toolbox and make sure that my foreground color is black and I want to make sure I have a soft brush, which I do. If you don't, you can click on that little arrow and these are the hard edge brushes and these are the soft edge brushes and I want a soft edge brush. I can just choose one of these and then close that and I'm going to make my brush bigger by pressing the right bracket key on my keyboard. And I'm actually going to lower the opacity down a little bit for the brush, bring it down to about 
and then I'm just going to paint over his shoes a little bit and some of the lower areas. And actually the knees on his jeans seem a little bright too, so I'm just going to see if I can darken those up a little bit. And then the last thing I'm going to do to kind of tie him into this photo better is I'm going to go up to the Layer menu and choose Layer Style, Style Settings, and that opens this dialog box. And I'm going to add a drop shadow. So I'll click on that. And you can play with these sliders to, you know, make the size of the shadow bigger or the distance more. And I probably would spend a little more time, but I don't want to go into too much detail and make this too long because it may not be something you're going to do with the particular photo that you use. But I do want to just stress that you usually have to make some adjustments to the lighting and a drop shadow probably helps. Just keep that in mind when you bring bring it into your new photo. So there you have it, a fairly quick and easy way to move a person into a different photo. If you want to know as soon as I add a new video, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also enjoy reading any comments you care to leave. And also you can visit my website at EssentialPhotoshopElements.com to get lots more info on how to use Photoshop Elements. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Rick Peterson saying take care.